Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I've been doing some BJD content recently and I feel like in every single video that I do, I mention how I desperately need to paint these dolls. Um, they're sitting in my closet and there are a lot, there's just a lot of blank dolls in there. So today's the day y'all. We're going to be painting a BJD. I got pretty into Fairyland mini fees for a little bit. I mean, I'm still in a Fairyland mini fees. Um, they're just nice dolls like they're well made there's a lot of different sculpts and i have three of them so i wanted to paint one of them i've seen a lot of mini fees in really pretty like lingerie looks and this might not be the most unique idea but i wanted to make one because i've never made doll lingerie before um and i've seen some really pretty doll lingerie so that's what we're doing and i figured for the mini fee that i'm gonna choose i would pick merwin because i've just had her the longest for some reason this doll's head back won't stay on this is not common like i have two other mini fees this is not an issue with them um i think the magnets are just wrong or there's no magnets in her head or something's going on i'm not quite sure what it's not the biggest deal and this doll is excellently engineered uh her posing is really nice um i completely understand why these dolls are so popular i feel like there's just a lot of like smart ideas like the magnets in the hands and feet are really smart the key neck thing that has going on so you don't have to like um use like an s hook or anything that's pretty brilliant and they're just really sturdy dolls like i don't feel the need to restring them or hawk blue suede them they just come to you from fairyland and they're just ready to go <laughs> like they're great i chose merwin as my first mini fee because she just felt a little more unique than the other ones she has like a heavy brow and smaller eyes and she looks a little bit upset and i just liked it Whenever I begin a BJD, it's a little bit different than a fashion doll because I always start with making them a wig. So I put saran wrap over her head to protect her from the glue that I'm going to be using on her head. And I took some stretchy fabric and I pulled that as tight as I can, wrapping a rubber band around it. Taking some Elmer's glue, I'm just putting like five coats of that all over her head, letting it dry uh, between each coat and that's how we make a wig cap i'm not gonna lie i feel like i'm like particularly kind of bad at wig caps um mine are just a little lumpy but it's okay i mean they still work out so it's whatever i sketched out her hairline once it was dry and should i have brought her hairline down a little bit for sure uh but you know we love big foreheads in this household I trimmed everything and voila, we have a janky head cap. <laughs> I've decided with my BJDs, I'm basically just going to make them in the aesthetic that brings me the most joy, which is, um, well, we're going to be making this doll in mint green and pink. So her wig is going to be mint green. So I made some wefts out of yarn and I'm taking some Elmer's glue wall and I'm gluing those yarn wefts all over her wig cap. I glue the bangs on first and then I proceed to go from the bottom to the top with wefts. Since to me she kind of reminds me of like a pouty baby, <laughs> I wanted to give her baby doll bangs and ringlet curls. I just thought they would suit her. Once I get to the top, I take a weft at the part line and I flip it backwards. I do this on both sides of the part. I cut her bangs super short and I wanted them to not be so blunt looking so I took an X-Acto blade and I razored off the ends. To make her ringlet curls, we're going to be using a metal chapstick that I'm heating up with a flat iron and I'm just wrapping the hair around the metal chopstick pretty tight. I'm doing this for a very long time, her hair took a while, um, and I'm just working my way around. To keep all the many curls in place, I sprayed some Mega Hold hairspray onto her hair. Wow, gorgeous! And look, I'm peeking. Hey, <laughs> so creepy. I want to give her hair a little something something, so I have this fancy button and I'm sewing it onto her wig cap. Mm -hmm. 
Onto the face up, so I spray the doll three times with Mr. Super Clear, waiting 15 minutes between each spray and wearing a respirator mask. And then we start painting her face. So I wanted to keep her eyes uh, small. I didn't want them, I didn't want to give her like a lot of lid space. I wanted her to appear like she had hooded eyes, so I didn't bring that lid line very far above the eye that she has. Usually when I color in a waterline, I use watercolor pencil, but for BJD face-ups, I like doing this with pastels. It just looks a little less harsh. So I'm using a peach pastel and just quickly filling in that area. I find that a lot of BJD face-ups that I screenshot onto my phone have a puffy eye look. Um, and I thought that that would suit her really well because she has this like pouty little face. So I'm applying a ton of peach, like reddish pastel underneath her eyes. It looks intense now, but it's gonna blend out later and like get dulled down as the layers go up. I applied a ton of pink pastel and also red pastel in certain areas, just all over her face. I really like a heavy, blush look. I also feel like if you're ever confused how to do face-ups, add tons of pink to it, okay? It works out for me. Um, but I do this just all over. Cheeks, nose, chin, forehead, ears, all of it. On the first layer of face-ups, I also always apply a ton of blue um, around the brows, the inner corner, um, the upper, upper lip, the cheekbone. This uh, looks intense on that first layer, but uh, it fades out by the time I'm done. So I just really like this look because I feel like because Mr. Super Clear is a layering system, um, it looks like it's very much an undertone by the time I'm done. So it looks very intense this first layer, but don't you worry your pretty little head is gonna look uh, way more dulled down by the last layer. I sort of have the same mindset when it comes to veins on the face. Um, I'm putting them mainly around the eyes, but also on the forehead. And they're just branch like pencil marks that I'm barely touching the face with. I'm holding the pencil really far down away from the point. This gives me a little less control of the pencil so that the line that I'm doing is nice and kind of flowy and organic. Um, and then it also makes it so that I'm not pressing down very hard, which keeps my lines very light, which you want because by the time you're done this, by the time you're done with the doll, painting the face up, you don't really want to be able to see those veins too much. I use my red pan pastel on the lips for the first time for like a face up. Um, and I really like how it came out. It's very intense, but I dig it. And I'm shading around her face with browns, mainly around her eyes, her nostrils, a little bit around her lips. Um, I wanted to, so she has a very natural face up. Um, those are just my favorite kind. I feel like that's what I lean towards whenever I do face ups on fashion dolls or on BJDs. They're just my favorite. Sometimes I try to like sneak out of the box a little bit, but I like staying in the box. It's nice in there. <laughs> I begin the beginning stages of highlights with my white pan pastel on the brow bone, nostrils, and the inner corner. I initially did the lid lines with pencil, but that looks kind of scratchy on resin. So I'm going over those lid lines that I placed down with some wet watercolor that I took from my pencil. I was watching a BJD face up video by Xanthi and she does a really interesting technique for lips um, where she does like three different layers of lip lines. So the first one is just an initial kind of coating of lip lines um, and then you like spray and then she does a darker one and then you spray again and then she does the lightest one last and I just thought it was a pretty cool effective technique so I wanted to try it. With black pastel I'm tapping that in the inner and the outer corner of her upper lid. A lot of shading went into the eyes, so I'm bringing back highlights with a white watercolor pencil. I'm sketching lines around the lids and also the cupid's bow.
intensify those highlight lines even more, I'm going on top of them with white watercolor. To give her sort of subtle makeup, I took a metallic rose gold watercolor pencil and I flicked out a cat eye on the very outer portion of her lid and then I took a mint green watercolor and I put that right below the rose gold. Now for brows. So I feel like for a little bit when I was doing unnatural hair colors, I was giving my dolls unnatural eyebrows, but lately I just really like giving them a nice basic brown brow with crazy hair colors so that's what I'm doing I just like dark eyebrows um, so I gave her some eyebrows a shape with some brown pastel and then I put macro pearlex pigment all over her face for lashes I just immediately start going in with paint typically I would sketch them on with a black watercolor pencil but it just looks sort of scratchy and bad when you do that on resin so we're just going straight in with paint same with the brows I'm just going straight in with paint and giving her brow hair also for brows, this may sound obvious to you, but you know what? It wasn't obvious to me, so I'm gonna mention it. Um, when I initially dip my brush into the paint for the brow hair, I like lately going and doing the arch in the very back of the brow. That's because there's more paint on the brush and you want those areas to be a little bit more defined than the inner portion of the brow. So I do that very last. I gave her a little beauty mark underneath her eye. I've always wanted a beauty mark there, but I don't have the balls to tattoo one on my face. So I'm just gonna live vicariously through my doll. I added some duochromy green pearlex pigment on the lower lashes and the inner corner. I'm taking my Vallejo gloss and this is actually the last video I'm going to be using this because it's done though. I had to throw it out after this. Um, I ran out of it and I just me and this Vallejo gloss have been through a lot. I brought it from Kuwait with me. Um, but yeah, I don't know. RIP. Feels a little sad. I put it on the lips and the waterline. And with that, her face up is done, but it's not done, okay? Because we need lashes, they're very important. I went on a lash spray on Amazon. I typed in natural uh, lashes and I got these two pairs and I think they're pretty good. And then I typed in BJD lashes and I got these weird little chunky strip things. And I think we're gonna go with this pair of the natural human lashes. I just cut off the inner corner and I glued that to the eyes with tacky glue, by the way. Um, Tacky glue is great for gluing on eyelashes. I cut them in half always and then I apply them because it just makes my life 10 times easier. And I actually got the tacky glue idea from Teeny Tinkers. She uses tacky glue. Um, great suggestion. I'm going to link her down below. I was debating between whether I should blush the body or not because on resin, the blushing really is like real finicky. Um, it's not heavy duty at all. On fashion dolls, it's a little bit more heavy duty, but I decided, you know, this body's so gorgeous. I want to see it with a little bit of blushing on it so i just blushed it with the same tones that i used on her face so pinks reds blues purples browns This is the finished blushing and it just looks very very nice because these bodies are sculpted so beautifully that it just emphasizes all the pretty sculpting and I really liked how her little manicure turned out. I wanted to show you guys. We need to make her eyes. Um, so the eyes that she initially had on are some like old eyes that I made and they kind of like suck so I'm gonna make some in the same size because I thought the size is really flattering on her. What is the size? Who knows? I bought the molds off Amazon and they're not labeled at all. Um, so sorry about it. Um, but I'm going to be mixing some UV resin and some white alcohol ink together. And bippity boppity boo, we got some eyeballs. After those are all filled, I take a toothpick and I just slowly kind of stir up the resin to make sure that there's no air bubbles. 
I cured the resin with my UV lamp and I took them out and I made three different pairs and not, well, I think like maybe one pair was perfect, but the other two just uh, weren't. So it's okay, it's whatever. They had like an air bubble near the iris, but we're st it's still gonna work, it's still gonna be fine. For the eyeball texture that we want, I'm taking epoxy sculpt and it's a two part component that you mush together and then it makes it not air dry because last time I said it was air dry clay, I got like 15 comments of people being like, no, um, it, okay, you mix them together and then it like hardens because like the chemicals react. I think that's what happens. But anyway, I took a little ball of it and I put it into each one of the bases and then I mushed it down with the backside of a chopstick. For the pupil, I used a dotting tool and I'm taking a needle and I'm just adding lines that are radiating out from the pupil. And I'm also sort of stabbing the needle into the um, epoxy sculpt to create kind of dots because um, you don't want it to be completely uniform, or at least I don't. I'm coloring the eyes with soft pastel and I did one uh, blue sort of teal eye color, I did purple and I did pink. Once I have that initial shade that I want, I'm taking a darker shade and a smaller brush and I'm tapping that down onto the middle or the pupil. I mix alcohol ink of the corresponding shade of the eye with quite a bit of resin and I do a thin coat of that on top of the iris because I want that ink to sink into the grooves that I place down with the needle to get more shading and depth for those eyes. After the alcohol ink is done curing, I take a little bit of UV resin and I put that into the pupil and then I take a point back gem. This is kind of important. Don't use a flat back gem, use a point back gem. And I put that into the pupil of the eye and it gives it a really pretty look. Um, if you use a flat back gem, it's gonna give you a weird mirror quality. It's not cute. I cure that and then I go in with metallic acrylic paint and I just do some dots they're in the corresponding shades of the eyes so purple with purple blue with blue pink with pink This is gold glitter paint. It's basically just chunky glitter with, I think like glue <laughs> mixed in. Um, I'm putting some of that on top of the eyes as well. It just gives it some gold glitter. The last stage of glitter that I did was I took my hollow pink glitter, mixed it with UV resin and did a coat of that on each one of the eyes and let it cure. And then I did the final stage of doming the eyes with UV resin and let that cure. They turned out pretty good. I feel like I've gotten better with eyes because I used to make quite a few of them and then I'd maybe like two of them, but now I like all of them. My fave is probably the purple. Um, I wanted to like the pink one the most, but I think that the pupil gem that I chose was just a little too light. There just wasn't really much contrast going on. So I guess just a mental note for the next time I make eyeballs. to lingerie so i found this little number on instagram and it's very cute so i wanted to uh i guess recreate it or not really recreate i don't know it's heavily inspired by it basically um and i'm gonna link the person who made it down below but i am sewing together the uh front and the side panels After those are all sewn on, we are sewing the back panel on. Then we hem everything, and I basically only hem anymore with Fabri-Tac glue, so that's exactly what I'm doing. This is going to be a cup, so I'm sewing a dart onto the middle. We sew those cups into place on the front of the garment.
Once we sew the side panel to the back panel, we're almost done. The last sewing step is just sewing the crotch together. Here's her little outfit off screen. I made her some straps with some pink beads just to hold it up because it was a little floppy. I probably should have put like an underlayer, but you know what? I didn't. So yeah, um, I wanted to do the bell sleeves. As, not bell sleeves. What are these types of sleeves called? I really don't know and I do them all the time but we're gonna be making those um, and I gather stitch the top and the bottom and then I sew it up the back seam the base is basically done but we must decorate so I have many a bow and frill and lace and ribbon and we are just gonna be either gluing or sewing this onto the outfit After the main part of her outfit is done, I decided she needed like a collar or something on her neck. So I cut some lacy ribbon that I got and I uh, glued a little pearl on the middle and then I glued a ribbon on top to tie around her neck. I made some simple green stockings off camera and I was going to keep it at just like stockings, but I don't know, I found these shoes on junkiespot.com. Um, they're just like a BJD website where they have a lot of ready stock BJDs and some accessories and they had these pink shoes and I just thought that they would go pretty well. Um, they do fit okay. It's not perfect. They also gave me this like little squeezy cat and some extra bows, which I'll definitely be using those because they look really good, but I thought they looked really nice with this outfit. So that is the finished doll. Yes, here she is. Wow. Um, I love her. <laughs> I, I mean, I feel like I love all my dolls that I make um, and I feel like all my BJDs have a special place in my heart because I just am trying to try with them. So I hope that kind of comes across. And um, here's just some simple pics of her. I hope you guys enjoy her. I took some pics of her with my uh, Resin Soul BJD that I painted a while ago that's on this channel. So if you want to see that, check it out. I'll link it in the description box. And if you guys have any questions about her or any questions about BJDs or mini fees or whatever, uh, let me know down below. Uh, like this video if you like this video. Subscribe makes me happy. And I hope you guys are having a beautiful day. Bye!